Okay, so here we're going to finish off our limit problems. 16, 17, and 18, these all involve a special limit involving E. Maybe you've seen these, maybe you haven't. So again, of course, if you're doing this stuff on a quiz or a test, you may ask, not may, I would ask my teacher or professor or whomever if this is also relevant stuff. And you should hopefully be aware, you know, hopefully you've been going to class and you know if you've been talking about this stuff or not. Okay, so let's do 16. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus x raised to the power of 2 over x. So the special limit result that we're going to use is right here. It says the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus 2x over 1 over x, that equals e. It's much like the ones that we did involving trig. If this was 1 plus 2x, you would want to have 1 over 2x. If it was 1 plus 10x, you would, have one o you would want to have 1 over 10x. Same thing. Okay, you want a 1, you want a plus, and then you want whatever's here and whatever's right there to be the same thing. So 16. This one's not too terrible. Well, I've got the 1, yes. I've got the plus, yes. I've got the x, great. Oh no, I've got a 2 on the top. Well, at least I've got the x in the denominator, so, so um, at least that, that's nice. I'm just going to rewrite this. Very easy. I'm going to make it 1 over x. Well, if I have 1 over x, what power would have to go on the outside? Well, it would be 2, remember? If you have something in parentheses, x squared raised to the fifth, that's just x to the tenth. So since these are in you know brackets or parentheses, same idea. If I take 1 over x and multiply it by 2, I'm still going to get 2 over x, so this is algebraically the same thing as what we started with in 16. And again, there's a rule that says you can pull this limit inside. So it's the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus x raised to the power of 1 over x. All that is going to be squared. And now we're just using our little, our little limit result here. It says that 1 plus x raised to the 1 over x, it says that equals e. It's all being squared. Okay, so the inside, that all gives me e, but don't forget about your power of 2, so it says it's still being squared. So that's going to be your answer, e squared. Nothing, nothing more to it than that. Um, let's see. Let me make again, I always like making these variations. So suppose it was the limit as x approaches 0, 1 plus 4x. Suppose we had 3 over um, 7x. Suppose we had something like this. Let me find my little scratch paper here that I want to use. Okay, suppose we had something, something like that. Okay, same logic. I've got a 1, yes. I've got a plus, yes. I've got a 4x, that's fine. I'm going to put this in brackets. This is going to be a little fraction, and I'm going to move some stuff out. I want a 4x underneath here. So there's my x. Okay, so I'm going to keep the x underneath there. Do I want the 3? No. It goes outside. Kicked out of the party. Do I want the 7? Nope, you're not invited either. You're out of the party. Okay, you can still think about there as being a 1 there. Again, if I multiply, I still get 3 over 7x. Again, whatever's right here, I want that to be the same thing right here. All right, well, if I multiply the denominator by 4, I have to multiply the numerator by 4 as well. But instead of putting it here, I'm just going to put it out here. So again, if I multiply, the 4s are can will cancel, and I'll still have 3 over 7x, which is what we started with. So just like before, this entire limit is going to turn into e, but it's still raised to this power of 3 times 4, which is 12 over 7. And that would be your answer, e raised to the 12 over 7 power. Okay, oh, I can hear you being sad out there. Only two to go. 17. Where'd my little formula go? Let me bring that back. Okay, 17. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x. 
raised to the power of 3x. Now this one, this one feels a little different. Why, is it, why does it feel different? Well, let's notice the, the differences. Instead of going, the limit going to 0, now it goes to infinity. Instead of x, we have 1 over x. Instead of the power being 1 over x, we just have a number multiplied by x. Well, it still works out. It's, it's going to be the same thing. Notice in the original one, as x approaches 0, x still approaches 0. As x approaches 0, you can think about 1 over 0. You can think about that as like being, like, that's going to infinity. You should be really careful. You should say it's from the right, but think about that as being like infinity. Same thing, as x approaches infinity, 1 over infinity, it's still going to 0. So this term is still going to 0. This exponent will still go to infinity as well. So maybe, ah, maybe it is the same thing. It just looks a little different. A lot of times the technique that they'll do on these is they'll do a little relabeling. Okay, so I think I, I've, do I want, I've got a 1, yes, I've got a plus, yes. Well, I just want a single variable here. So I'm going to relabel. I'm going to say, let's let y equal 1 over x. Now, we have to do a couple things. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. So we've got the limit. My new limit is only going to involve y's. It's going, I don't want any x's. Well, I've got 1 plus, we said 1 over x, we're calling that y. So I have to now address a couple things. I have to think, what's the limit going to, and what's happening to my new exponent? Those are the two things I've got to worry about. Well, let's think about it. Originally, x was going to infinity. Well, as x goes to infinity, 1 over x, well, that's going to be 1 over a larger and larger number. That's going to approach 0. But we said the same, we just said that 1 over x and y are the same thing. So if 1 over x is approaching 0, that means y is also approaching 0. So this is going to be my new limit. Now we're going to have a limit as y approaches 0, which, hey, that was what we used a second ago. The same thing. I've still got 3 up there. Now I've got to get rid, I've got to rewrite x in terms of y. Well, we have y equals 1 over x. That's what we labeled it as. I can multiply both sides by x. That'll give me xy equals 1. And again, I, I, I'm trying to get rid of the x, so let me solve for that. I can divide by y, divide by y. That gives me x equals 1 over y. So really, I'm going to have 3 multiplied by 1 over y. And now this looks just like what we had a second ago. I want 1 plus y, a 1 over y. Okay, we don't want the 3. We'll just do the same thing. We'll kindly escort we'll kindly escort that power of 3 outside again you still get 3 over y same thing as before I'm not going to write it we could pull this limit inside really we would be left with e raised to the third power and that is our answer all right grand finale Let's do 18. Okay, so this one has quite a few different things going on. We're going to do the exact th same thing we did a second ago. We're going to use a relay one. One thing to point out is I don't want... I don't want to let y equal 5 over x. Okay, that would not be correct to say y equals 5 over x. And the reason is, again, I have to put it in this form. I want it to be 1 plus, 1 plus something. So I could write this as 1 plus negative 5 over x. Okay, I've got my 1, I've got my plus, great. Now we're going to do the relabeling. So that would be one little subtle thing that would be different. But now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say let y equal negative 5 over x. Okay. Just like before, as x approaches infinity, negative 5 over x. Well, negative 5 over a big number, that's still going to get close to 0. So as x approaches infinity, y would also go to 0. And let's do the same thing. Let's solve. You can think about this as being y over 1. Um, so if you cross multiply, we'll get x times y. 
x times y equals negative 5. So again, I'm just multiplying, cross-multiplying. And again, we're going to solve for x. So I would have x equals negative 5 over y. And now let's just do our relabeling. We have the limit. Okay, so we said y is now going to approach 0. I've got 1 plus, okay, we called negative 5 over x. That's what we relabeled as y. x, well, x now gives us the same thing as negative 5 over y. So just like before, I don't want, well, I guess let's write it down, negative 5 over y. So we've now done our relabeling. This relabeling process certainly works on other, you know, you can use this on other limit problems as well. So it's not like this is unique to to problems involving E. This relabeling process is actually a pretty useful little trick. But, anywho, we've got 1 plus Y. It's the exact same thing as before. I want 1 over Y, so there it is. Well, where's the negative 5? Let's put the negative 5 on the outside. Okay, so this limit, as Y approaches 0, 1 plus Y raised to the 1 over Y, that's just going to be E raised to the negative fifth power. Sometimes people don't like negative exponents, so you can now write that as 1 over e to the fifth power. And that is it. So congratulations to you. Round of applause if you've made it this far through all of them. Um, you deserve an award of some sort. I don't know what it would be. Hopefully a good grade on your test. So again, a bunch of limit problems. I'll say it one more time. This isn't all-encompassing. There are many other types of limit problems, but hopefully this will give you a little a little taste on some of them. You know, there's certainly other techniques to use. I can't remember now. I've done these over the course of a couple days, and I've lost all my problems. You know, good things to think about on my spreadsheet. Conjugates, uh, fractions, um, getting common denominators, expand and cancel, um, trig identities. There were none on here that involved trig identities. Um, what else? Special limits involving sine and cosine and E. You may have to divide by the highest power of X. I think we saw an indeterminate form where you had to factor out a square root of X and then it became not indeterminate. So this is the thing that makes limits tricky. If you change them a little bit, a lot of times you use a much different procedure. They're not just quite so mechanical all the time, and that's what makes them a little bit more challenging. But again, I hope all of these problems give you a little bit more of an idea on at least how to get started. And I don't know. I hope it helps you, and good luck out there.